Happy Friday everybody and welcome back to Reach Our Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle and this week I want to talk about Nidovirus. Now, Nidovirus is likely a new genus of virus that is known to cause respiratory infections in a variety of species. It was first found in the mid-90s in ball python collections, but the green tree python collection as well has become acutely aware of its presence because it's had some devastating effects. In those species, a lot of times, animals barely begin to show symptoms and then you'll have massive collection die-offs. And despite veterinaries' best efforts, they're unable to figure out what it is. And traditional antibiotics that would work for bacterial respiratory infections seem to not work at all because obviously antibiotics don't work on viruses. Now, fortunately, because of the work of a few dedicated keepers, a test has been developed that you can simply receive in the mail and test your collection. Now each test you buy only works for one animal and the reason why I'm testing in my collection for nidovirus today is because I have a customer buying two animals which are going to a relatively closed collection and he does not want to risk bringing anything in. Now I obviously applaud that. I think it's a great idea for all of you guys to know exactly what's going on because the disease can pass around very easily. That's simple enough to administer these tests and it would be a great precautionary step because once your animals contract this virus, the scary thing about it is there's very little you can do to actually help it other than separate the animals that get a positive test and just kind of wait for the disease to take its course. Not something that we want to do. Now, I'm not too worried about this. I've actually tested my collection randomly at different intervals and I've had other customers that have wanted tests done on any animals coming into their facilities. I obviously am totally willing to facilitate that. I think that's a great idea. So I don't expect to find anything here, but this is kind of like a, a cheap insurance policy for my customers buying expensive animals and moving those animals into their beloved collections. So let's open this up and we'll go through exactly how this works. All right, let's go ahead and give ourselves some room and I will show you what comes in a NIDO test. These are from Fish Head Labs and you can order these tests from fishheadlabs.com. Here's a couple of our tests. For the sake of this video, we're gonna test two animals, even though I went ahead and ordered three tests. Price is $59.99 per test. Well worth it. Very cheap insurance. It's quite a bit cheaper than going to the vet to get the same test done. They give us a handy little brochure that talks about NIDO virus, what it is, and more importantly, it's gonna have instructions on exactly how to collect a NIDO virus sample from the area of the snake. Along with each kit, you're also gonna get this form, which you will need to fill out for each specific animal, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that a little later in this video. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. They're going to give us a couple of tubes with the stabilizing media. That's where we can put our samples. And here we have a tongue depressor. In case you need something to help you open the mouth of your snake. Here's a couple of swabs. So we have two swabs and, and two tubes. Now really they would only need one if it's a good sample, but you can go ahead and take two since they give it to you and send them both in. Or in the case that something becomes contaminated, here you have a backup. A whirl pack is the sterile container that our tube is going to go in once it's finished. And we have a couple of nitrile gloves. Now, we want to go ahead and disinfect our hands, but remember, we're not trying to kill the germs that uh, we're trying to collect here, so we need to go ahead and make sure we wear those nitrile gloves just to keep any external contamination away from the tip of that test. Here's our first subject. Pretty little boy, albino golden child. 
go ahead and pull open our sterile tongue depressor. It's really important that you use new equipment for each of these animals as you test so there's no cross-contamination. Do not let the tip of that little spongy swab touch anything other than the inside of the snake's mouth. Now the area that you're going to try to test is a little tricky to get to and this is probably best done with two people. But inside the second row of teeth on the top jaw, you're actually going to have the coanal slit. Now this is where uh, it's like in the back of your mouth where your nasal cavities attach down to your throat. This is where it is on a snake. It sit sits directly above the glottis, which is the tube that they breathe through the esophagus as it extends to the front of the mouth. But this sits directly against the tip of the glottis with the mouth closed. You can see the little mucous membrane there. See it right on the tip? It's kind of stringy. We want to actually grab some of that on the tip. That's perfect. This guy can go for a walk. We want to make sure that we do not contaminate this tip or the inside of the tube. So we're going to very carefully place it inside there. And I'm just going to snap this swab off here and drop the whole thing inside the tube and close that up. There's our first sample. Okay, now I need to clearly mark each separate animal. You would put two samples in this one bag if you took them both from the same snake, but every different test subject or snake needs a different bag that's clearly labeled. So we'll just call this snake number one, the purple golden child. Go ahead and sterilize our hands, get a new set of gloves and a new tongue depressor. Remember, we do not want to share anything between these animals or it could mess up our results. Now we have this sweet girl here, one of my personal favorites from this year. We're going to just gently walk that tongue depressor in the mouth until they open it voluntarily. We can put it towards the back of the throat there. I'm going to use my legs to kind of hold the rest of her body out of the way. All right. Now the instructions say to go ahead and swab for 15 seconds at a minimum. But what we're trying to do again, there's a mucous membrane on the inside of your mouth and the snakes. And we want to go ahead and just scrape some of that material off. You can actually see on her bottom jaw there, the glottis as she takes breaths that touches. And if there was any viral infection, it would come up through the esophagus from the lungs, out the glottis and rest here on the top of the mouth, making this the prime spot to collect a sample from. So again, we're just going to roll that around. See that mucous membrane on there? I just twirl some of that up on my swab here. Make sure I get a good amount of material from the snake's mouth. Okay, good girl. You're done. No worse for the wear, although I'm sure she's a little bit peeved at me. Again, the most important thing is that that swab does not touch anything and nothing else gets inside of that test tube. So we'll snap it off, close it up, and we're good to go. Here's our whirl pack. Now these actually come with a perforated tear off top, so you're going to go ahead and remove that. Use the two tabs on the sides to go ahead and pull it open. And you can drop your sample in there. I'm very confident we got a great sample off of this one. You can see that mucous membrane lift up and onto the swab. So we're going to roll it over a few times. And then there's actually a wire in the end to just fold back closed and keep it sealed. So this whirl pack is a second layer of redundancy just to make sure no contaminations get in. We need to label this one separate from the other one so we're going to call her snake number two, the super motley. And now we're good to go. We'll pull those gloves off and the, I'm gonna put these back inside the bags just for to be triple safe that there's no cross-contamination between these two samples. So they're in the vial, in the whirl pack, and inside of the Ziploc bag that the test came from. Now let's take a look at this form. It's fairly simple. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in uh, Reach Out Reptiles information here, make sure that they can contact us any way they need to. If they have any questions, phone number, email, and then this stuff's important, the date 
the species give the scientific name, and then the animal ID needs to match what's on the bag. They ask for a few other details here, but the, the big thing here is, are there any clinical signs? Was the snake sick? On this, in this case, it's no. Was it ever exposed to an infected animal? No. And then I said, yes, this is a part of quarantine, but this is pre-quarantine test, meaning before I even ship the snake over, we're gonna check it out. And I'm just gonna explain that right here. Okay, they already have it filled out here that this is nidovirus testing. So you really only have one example. And I'm gonna fill one out for each test kit. So this again is animal number one, and we'll put the bag for animal number two in the self-addressed envelope with postage paid. And that's it. Well guys, that's how it's done. I mean, it's fairly simple, probably easier with two people. And you know, the point of this testing, even though it can be scary, is that it's always better to know exactly what it is going on than it is to just assume. And in this day and age, when reptiles are traded around like a commodity, going from place to place to place, collection to collection, these collections are open, they have animals in and out all the time, numerous species, wild caught, captive bred, people attending shows. I mean, this is a, this is a viral disease. It's easily transferable, but I don't think we need to panic. Work with respectable breeders that are working with these animals and are open and don't have a problem sharing with you results like this. I actually went ahead and included the customer's email in on these letters, so he's gonna get the results at the exact same time I am, and if everything clears, we're gonna go ahead and ship the animals off to a happy new home. But before we do that, I wanted to just give a shout out to my buddy John Cashman of Cashman Reptiles, obviously repping his shirt today. If you guys don't know John, he is just the nicest Californian rock star breeder of retics that there is. And I also got a new sticker from uh, Tony Pantaleo of SenCal Exotics. Tony, hopefully I said your name there correctly, but thank you so much for the sticker, man. If you guys want to shoot out a sticker and get a shout out on one of these videos, just hit up the address in the video and it's in the link below. Well, take care guys, have a great weekend. I'm gonna go drop this in the box. Let's just see how good these guys really are. Ha <laughs>